Hi everyone, I'm Vincent Greenheit. And I'm Morgan Wolterstorff. And together we host a show on Blueprint called Knit Meets Knot. On it, we tackle similar projects using different techniques. I'm the one that crochets. And I knit. Here's a quick preview. Enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome to Knit Meets Knot. I'm Vincent, I'm the one that knots, and this is Morgan, the one that knits. In this show, our crafting worlds collide. And today, we're both creating toys. Toys! Toys! I guess she's excited. Let's get started. Let's go! So we're making toys. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything. I'm gonna be making an amigurumi doll, which if you didn't know, an amigurumi is a crochet or knitted stuffed toy. I have two corgis at home, so I think I'm gonna take inspiration from them. So I always like to sketch out my pieces before I do it. So sketches don't need to be perfect. It's just a general idea of what you're going for. I'm gonna go for a just generic dog, I think, okay. but I'm gonna avoid giving it a tail just to give it an ode to my corgis. What about you? Because you don't see as many knitted Amigurumi toys. Uh -uh. This is my first one. So I've been bouncing around a couple ideas, but I've finally come up with one. And what's that gonna be? That does not look like a Sharpie. This is how I will draw up my toy. I'm actually also going to do a dog. Okay, this is quite the visual representation. Mm -hmm. For me, when I think knitting an animal, I think very linear. I'll show you, I'll show you. Wow, so you're creating a knitted balloon animal. Yes. I can't really imagine or believe you, so you're gonna have to prove it to me. Let's go, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see it. So I'll be showing you my technique on how to create the magic ring. Perfect for amigurumi. So what I like to do is I like to put out my index finger, wrap my yarn around, creating an X shape. I put my hook underneath and I grab the other yarn and pull that through. I yarn over with my working yarn, pull that through, and pull this tail out because you don't want to worry about the tail. And here you are, you have a circle of sorts, and that's where we're going to be working. It's equivalent to the foundation chain if you were to be working flat. You're going to take your working tail, and for our sake I'm going to be putting six single crochet into the ring. So now that we have our six single crochets in our ring, this is where the magic comes in. So you can take your tail, you can cinch it, pull that together, and now you have a nice clean circle of single crochets. We're gonna be wanting to increase this, that way we're making it wider and bigger. So we're going from six to 12. It is always good to use a stitch marker to know where your round ends. Putting that in there, and then we're gonna be increasing into every single stitch around. All right, so we've just come to the end of our round, so we're gonna take out our stitch marker, do our increase in that same stitch our stitch marker was in, and you're gonna use your tail to cinch up your work, make it a little bit tighter, and as you can see, our little ring is starting to create kind of a flat circle. Now that we've been working flat, I'm gonna show you how to start kind of curving it and creating that new dimension. So to do that, instead of increasing in our stitches, we are gonna just do a full round of single crochet. So again, inserting to our last stitch where our stitch marker was at. So as you saw, we were working flat, but since we just did a whole round of single crochet, we can actually pop this out. It is starting to create kind of a dome shape. You know, as I'm making this flat, I can't decide if I'm more impressed or jealous of the fact that your crocheting is so versatile. Like that's absolutely amazing. It is what drew me to it at the beginning. So I love it too. Now's the part of the show where we compare and contrast our projects. So, how far along are you on yours? So, I have my little dog body coming along. His safety eyes are already in. Um, he is stuffed, and I used kind of a smaller hook and really tight stitches. I kept my tension tight so I could avoid okay. the stuffing popping through the stitches. Are these the ears? Those are going to be the oh ears. Gosh. Yeah, can you I... can 
Eee! Looks more like a <laughs> look mouse at, now. Look at him. What are these? Those are gonna be his little arms and legs. They're so cute. <laughs> They're like little raspberries. <laughs> I don't think I would be able to knit small enough. You don't think so? I don't think so. This is amazing. That just shows how different knit and crochet are well, with how crochet holds its shape so well. Because with mine, it's so, I, I wanna say porous, but it has so many holes going on that it's more like a, a material. It creates a fabric mm -hmm. rather than like a nice shape. Side by side, you can kind of see the difference in stitches, but knitting's always had more of a, a drape to it. And it seems like you do have a, quite an idea of what you're going for. Yeah, so if you look, you see there's these little streaks of holes and that's actually gonna be where I'm shaping the dog. So mine's looking pretty rough. Let's get back to it and finish these hounds. I appreciate the puns. I agree, let's do it. So now I'm gonna show you how to decrease in between each section of your dog. So if you look at your dog, what you've got here is nose, ears, four legs, and your different parts of the torso and the neck. So all of that equals 10 spots. But in between each part where it twists, we actually need to decrease just to get rid of a little bit of that mass. So I'm gonna put the dog away and I'm gonna show you how to decrease in between each section. Make sure that you have an even number amount of stitches and we can get started. So I'm just gonna insert my needle into two stitches, knit them together and cast off. It's as simple as that. So now we've knit all of our stitches two together at a time. So you flip your work over and now we're gonna purl all of our stitches back. So we've purled our way back to the right facing side. And now we just need to increase to get all of your stitches back. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit one stitch, increase, knit one stitch, increase, all the way down just to get our number of stitches back. So I'm going to knit. And I'm actually gonna do a cast on increase, which you pretend like you're casting on, but you only have one strand. So you go into that hole, put it on your stitch, and just cinch it tight as if it were a brand new stitch in and of itself. So knit one, cast on, all the way down. Alrighty, and so that creates a beautiful, pretty holy sew path. All right, I brought snacks. <gasps> it's tea time! Yeah, oh I figure goodness. it's... Those look delicious. That part of the show where we get to unwind and, and chit chat. So what are we talking about today? Well, everyone's got a different beautiful mind and I wanna know where you get your inspiration from because it's easy to kind of fall into that creative slump, right? That's a really good conversation, I like that. I do this full time. Mm -hmm. So when I wake up, I'm just in it. You know, I'm ready to make, ready to do what I do. But for me, my number one thing is I have to eat breakfast, walk my dog, and get dressed. Those are my number three things. I, I do those every day. Getting dressed is important for me because if I just hang out in my pajamas all day, it like puts me in this mindset of, ah, I don't know, you could do whatever. Whatever happens, happens. And so when I get dressed, it's like, I'm determined to get something done today. See, I actually like to wake up uh, in my pajamas and stay in those for as long as possible. <laughs> I started crocheting because of like Pokemon and my video game uh, background. So <laughs> I do like to put on like my favorite anime or show. That art inspires me. For me, that makes me think of when I'm trying to come up with like a specific project or I feel like I'm in a slump, mm -hmm. I think of what's the last time that I, you know, inspiration struck and I try and recreate it. So either I'll go on Pinterest, I'll go on Instagram, you know, and I'll try and just create a formula of sorts to, mm -hmm. to just revert back to every time. Social media is like so relevant that like, it's right. really cool that, you know, your peers can inspire you like daily. Absolutely. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I'm constructing my dog because before it looked really silly. And right now it feels like we're at the fair with some sausage. <laughs> $8 a pound. <laughs> okay, I have sewn the line to connect it into a circle and then these are the spots where I had my sew spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the ears together and then I'm gonna attach it to the head. So since my yarn is here, I'm just gonna sew it in there and secure those three spots together. So now that's together, I have to secure right here, two up here, so that he's actually an attentive dog and not some sad little droopy dog. Ah! Ah! 
Okay, so and so cute. I'm gonna make a quick little knot so that everything isn't pulling itself together. Stuff it. You just wanna make sure that all of your limbs just match in fluffiness. And now what I do is I sew around the perimeter of those that holy line, and then I'm gonna cinch it right back up. Cinch. Wrap it around. And now I'm gonna tie a nice tight knot and move on to the next section. Mine's pretty straightforward, so how about you show me how you do yours? All right, so as you were doing that, I took it upon myself to start bringing my little dog to life. So I have oh, one more precious. piece. Have you named him? His name is going to be Roger from here on out. So he's all pinned. I, I would always recommend pinning your work before starting. It kind of gives you an idea of what your canvas is going to look mm -hmm. like. I always prefer to start sewing with the body already stuffed. And so when you start stuffing, my hole is pretty small right here because I've already started crocheting it down with my decreases. A lot of people just aren't patient with it, but I think that's my biggest advice is just be patient, use small pieces, just little by little. And then as you can see, my doll is really busy. He's going to undergo surgery soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's really good to leave a generous amount of yarn mm -hmm. with those tails at the end of each of those limbs. So I'm going to start sewing. Hopefully he has insurance and money for a copay. Oh, this is nice. I kind of wish I had a friend. <gasps> well, 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 aren't these looking pretty cute? Okay, let's look at yours. I went for a more a cute style. I added a few details on the face, little rosy cheeks, some eyebrows. Who's got eyebrows? Give them some character. <laughs> what about yours? How's yours looking? Mine looks like a balloon animal. That's so cute. You really it's... nailed the representation with the Thank balloon. Thank you. He it's kind of more of a cuddly fella. He needs some support. <laughs> I'm so happy with the way he turned out though. He looks very sweet. Well, I'm happy to be your support system. Now that we're done, you ready to go play? Thank you. Let's go play. So that was one small glimpse of the fun things we'll be doing on this show together. To see the entire series, go to myblueprint.com and subscribe today. Get everything you need to create, from classes to patterns to amazing yarn, at myblueprint.com.